thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Dave Glazer. As Dr. Quattrochi said, I graduated from Metro State in 2011, and I had, when I began my program, I sat down with him and I said, um, Dr. Quattrochi, I want to be a collegiate strength and conditioning coach. And he said, slow down. <laughs> as you can imagine, I'm pretty much like ahead of myself in everything that I do. Um, he said, when you get to your internship, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And he was instrumental in helping me set up my internship at the University of Denver. It was the most challenging thing I've ever done in my entire life. Um, plus a full-time job, plus a daughter, plus two classes on campus as well. So um, I graduated in 2011 and it took me a long time, maybe nine months to really decide that I wanted to be a personal trainer. My mom actually came to me, she was my first client. She said, I'll pay you for your time. I needed the money at the time. Um, but I want to meet with you once a week in a local gym. She had a membership at 24, and I did too. And as you know, that's frowned upon. You're not <laughs> supposed to train your clients in 24-hour fitness, unfortunately. You know, it's really low overhead. It's like 30 bucks a month, right? So we were meeting, and we got busted. And an assistant fitness manager came over and asked if I was training her. I must have seen the exercise selection. And I said, no, this is my mom. And if you were doing your job, you would have recognized that. That's not the right thing to say. <laughs> um, so my mom asked me to find something more private, and I did. I found a 6,500 square foot building where I could rent from the business owner. She was a strength coach as well. She had eight or nine other trainers renting space, so it was a scalable business model for her. I built my business um, for three and a half years in that facility, and when they decided to move locations, I decided not to go with them my own small studio space, about 1,600 square feet, section for yoga, we had a full kitchen, and we had a strength and conditioning area. What I realized is that I could not scale my business with that small space, kind of low ceiling, probably this tall. You know, it's hard to do a lot of med ball stuff when our ceilings are too low. So um, I became a kind of collaborator with a business that was around the corner for me. They did boxing and they have jujitsu classes, and I became a member. I love boxing, and then I started jujitsu about two and a half years ago. And I noticed they weren't using their space for up until like 6.30 every day. And the overhead was killing me, I couldn't scale my business, so I asked them if I could rent a space from them. And we came to an agreement, and I have about 900 square feet of their space that I can use if they have a class going on. If they don't, I can use the mat for speed and agility, um, biometrics, dynamic warm up, and then yoga if we wanted to. So that's a brief description of how I got um, started in my business, which is called Fit Life Champions. It's six years old. Um, our core values is something I like to start with. Uh, safety, education, community, and transparency. Safety is a given for you guys. You went through all the classes to prepare you how to train um, clients safely. But primarily, we are educators. Each and every day, we're teaching people how to fuel for performance, actually eat um, whole, whole foods, home cooked, 90% of the time so that they can reach their goals, whether that's to gain weight, maintain weight, or lose weight. Those are the three body types that we work with. All the while building a community with a transparent philosophy. Why are we doing assessments? <clears throat> that's a question we get. Well, we seem like we're wasting our time here. Oh no, absolutely not. You guys are convinced that assessments are integral to your client's success, right? I only saw like 10 knots. Everybody know? <laughs> okay, all right, good. Um, my goal and my, my mission in life is to train my team to duplicate what I've done. Just as I basically duplicated what the previous business owner I rented space from, I just did it on a smaller scale. So we had up to three teammates at any one time renting space from me, just like them, so that I could actually create time in order to do this. Um, we want to educate our members at Fit Life Champions to graduate from our program. We don't want our clients to stick around. Like my parents, they started coming together. Six years later, they're still my clients, but now they train online. So they graduated from three days a week in person to two days a week in person to now online training closer to their home. It just works for them as they live, their, live out their retirement age. Um, and then my true purpose is to share the benefits of fitness and nutrition for mental health with the entire world. That's my purpose. That's why we're here. A couple of, uh, I'll go through these slides really quickly because I know that we don't have a lot of time. 
But Diane comes to me, and she was going to the gym three or four times a week. She had hit a plateau. She knew that, and she knew that something was holding her back. So she reached out over Facebook, and she said, Dave, will you meet with me? Let's talk nutrition. I talk a lot about nutrition on social media because it's a hot topic, but also I'm very passionate about it, too. So over the course of eight and a half months, she lost eight, eight and a half percent body fat and 15 pounds. Looks like a whole lot more than 15 pounds, doesn't it? Because the way that your clothes fit is more important, the way that you feel, the way that you think about yourself. What I didn't know at the time when she came to me is that she was contemplating suicide. And after eight and a half months, she's like, Dave, I'm off certain medications. I figured out how to um, deal with unexplainable tachycardia which was actually being caused by anxiety through her job. She took a two and a half month sabbatical and she ended up dating a personal trainer. You know what she said? He's like, Kyle, come work out with me. I'll, I'll do all of your tra training for you. She's like, don't you dare touch Dave's program. Like, I've obviously done the work. It works, I'm sticking with it. Three and a half years later, she's now in Fort Collins. She's not getting married to that guy, but I got the invite to the other way. <laughs> Uh, my buddy Boyce comes to me, similar situation, going to the gym about five days a week, wants to be a power lifter, that's his passion, and uh, he's like, Dave, it's not the gym, it's my nutrition. So we went straight up lifestyle change. <clears throat> Instead of going to McDonald's on his way to his 6.30 a.m. job at CU, where he's in HVAC, we started meal prep. And with a 90-10 perspective, 90% of the time I'm committed to my goals, 100% committed to my goals. And then 10% of the time, we encouraged him to live his life as he saw fit. He can still go out and enjoy a beer. He can still enjoy a uh, date night out. So over the course of 16 months, he lost 75 pounds and probably added 20 years to his life. Now, a few examples of our interns that we've worked with over the course of my six year career um, just happen to be twin sisters. So Sandrina and Sabrina were a referral from a previous intern. They grew up together here in Colorado, but they were going to school at Kansas Wesleyan University and playing um, volleyball for their team. They each spent 150 hours with me and not always at the same time. Hey, do you remember yesterday when we were talking about that exercise? No, Dave, that was my sister. It was unimaginably hard. Plus, it was the busiest summer of my career, but without their help, I probably wouldn't have been able to um, implement a new schedule system in my business, um, train our group, because I had the permission of the gym owner to run the internship program as I saw fit. So they, by the end of their program, were running 30-person group training. Um, they are now each in a collegiate strength and conditioning position, one of which is just finishing her master's. They don't know what their plan is after that master's, but they both know that they want to be in collegiate strength and conditioning. Uh, Glenn comes to me as a referral from Dr. Quattrochi, and he's a busy business owner just like myself. Um, he's in commercial real estate, so we worked early mornings and after he got off work. And this was kind of a flashback to my experience as an intern, where I had a full-time job and I needed to fit those hours um, over the summer, 420 or so hours, into a busy life. So we worked with his schedule, and when he came to us, uh, we were working on a lot of our online programs. So he, he was instrumental in helping me copy and paste some of the old into the new platform. So we, we were able to kind of work remotely with Glenn. He had some homework that he needed to get done in between the times that I would see him five or six days a week. So now I think he just got back from an international trip to Asia, still in commercial real estate, but he reaches out and he says, Dave, when you're ready, I want to open up Fitter Life Champions. That's his joke for our second location. <laughs> uh, Fernando actually approached me after a, a presentation just like this, and he said, Dave, you're a jiu-jitsu athlete. I just recently got promoted to black belt. Um, I would like to learn underneath you because we have so much in common. Fernando was the most coachable, the most uh, dedicated to the physiology and um, nutrition aspect of our jobs that he actually has more knowledge than I do. And that's a key component to our business is when we find reliable, trustworthy, um, knowledgeable teammates, we give them more responsibility. Fernando ran every single one-on-one -on -one and group training session <coughs> after the third week that he was an intern. Wow. 
under my supervision, of course, but he was proving himself each and every day so that he gained more responsibility. He helped me polish off all of those online training programs um, that I was telling you that Glenn set me up for so that we could launch our app last week. So our app is now on Apple and Google Play as of yesterday. So uh, he's still a head instructor at Gracie Baja Centennial and he still whoops my butt on the jujitsu mat. So Jess is one of our teammates. She's also a yoga instructor. Um, what you can expect out of an internship with Fit Life Champions is um, remote access to our program so that you can get your homework done, but also in-person experience with live clients who are part of our culture. They all come to us for different reasons, but they're all there for the same purpose, to build community, to learn safe and educational programs so that they can graduate from our workouts, so that they can do it on their own. I'll teach you how to build an online training program, and if your goal is to eventually open your own studio, I will put you on a path to do so. But most importantly, unlike myself, I don't know how to do this, but I know how to teach it. <laughs> Because when Dr. Calciochi comes to me and he says, Dave, will you teach for us two days a week? I'm like, hell, yeah. hell yes, I want to teach for you. Because Metro State gave me so much, <coughs> it was the key component for setting me up for success after school and teaching me. No, it didn't teach me how to train online, but it gave me the foundation and fundamental knowledge for me to create something for myself. Uh, over the course of the six years, we grew from one client to $72,000 in revenue in our third year. That's one person working no more than 20 hours a week, building a scalable business model that has reached clients in uh, Korea, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, Belize, going to Montana, it's kind of late, right? that was my cousin, <laughs> LA, um, and now we have our mentorship program, which is how I teach interns to run their own business that has reached Germany, uh, Alabama, Chicago, uh, California, and then about 10 businesses here locally. So that's something that you can uh, expect from an internship with Fit Life Champions. Um, a lot of responsibility, a lot of um, high expectations because you guys are prepared to basically take over my business. Because I don't want it anymore. Just kidding, I, I want to be the visionary and I want to move on so that I can fulfill my life's purpose, which is to share the benefits of fitness and nutrition uh, for mental health. I know I went through that very, very quickly and I gave you a ton of information. Uh, now's a good time for questions. And before we get questions, if you can expound on a couple of things. Um, when Fernando did his internship last, last year, last fall, mm -hmm. I think, one of the projects you were working on was a collaboration with uh, kind of an osteoporosis prevention sort of a company. Can you talk a little bit about what you've been doing with them? I can. Uh, this is the culmination of my um, six years worth of my career, as well as everything that I learned at, from Metro State, all put into one. Um, Fernando was very instrumental in helping me create um, online corrective exercise programs that can go anywhere in the world with minimal equipment that can be done in your home or reasonably well-equipped gym. And the reason why we created these uh, systems, there's three of them, is because a business called OsteoStrong reached out to me and they said, Dave, you do what we don't do, we do what you don't do, and we wanna team up and collaborate. They have 100 locations worldwide, and my job is to go to each and every one of the franchisees, um, their individual owners, and say, I have this program that will build value in your business, which means that you can raise your monthly revenue by charging each of your members more money, and I will do all the work. Because if I go to 100 businesses with my online corrective exercise programs, and I say, I'll do the, all the work, that's like free money for them. That's like ringing bells in their, in, their, in their mind. What I do is I charge them a monthly access where they upload their clients, they communicate that to me. But what we do on the back end is we give them the corrective exercise programs that Fernando was instrumental in helping me He's got an eye, eye for detail that I don't have, but I have this big picture vision. We spend one hour a week coaching up to a thousand clients online each week, one hour. So 
So that's good on my end too, where I can impact a thousand lives per month in only one hour per week of work. Sounds too good to be true? But I've worked on this program for four and a half years so that it can be automated and scalable and delivered to our clients all on their phone. Describe the business, would you, and, and the equipment that they have here, please? OsteoStrong has a mission of um, building building osteoclasts, osteoblasts, um, with vibration technology that's developed by NASA to help keep astronauts in shape when they're in zero gravity. So what they do is they have four isometric machines in their locations um, that overload the system four times more than any other resistance training exercise. So like when we do a drop, um, a depth jump from a height, say like here, and we stick the landing, we're loading our body at about 1.4 um, time, 1.4 X of our body weight. Their machines load the body in a safer way, isometrically, 4 X our body weight. So we're challenging the muscles, twisting them and bending them so that they repair themselves better and faster than what we can do with say like a death jump. What their challenge is, is that they only work with their members seven minutes a week. So what do their members do in the rest of the week? They come see Dave. And they use our in-home or our in-gym workout programs three days a week, if not more. They can, they can repeat workouts each week, but each week they get new workouts to do. And they're based in Ohio, but they're, they're all over the world. So the collaborating business owner that I met, um, she's in Finlay, Ohio. But they're based out of Tennessee, and then they have locations in Sweden and Norway, and, um, and they have an annual conference in August, which we're trying to roll out company-wide. So their plan is to have 500 locations in the next five years, which gives me the time freedom and the financial freedom to pursue that lifetime mission. Two other quick things while we have you. Talk about your performance nutrition cert and also the work you've done in strength conditioning, collegiate strength conditioning, as an entrepreneur with School of Mines. Of course. Um, precision nutrition came to me about 18 months into my business. Um, I knew that I wasn't providing my clients with the best service that I possibly could because I was kind of ignoring the nutrition conversation because I wasn't the expert. I have generalized, you know, eat more veggies, stuff like that, eat a lot of colors in your diet, which is probably something you're all familiar with. Precision nutrition is the equivalent of a master's degree in nutrition that I got over the course of 18 weeks, the same summer I was training the twins, and I was rolling out a new schedule system, and that I was beginning online training. So Precision Nutrition helped me build a virtual meal prep workshop, uh, which goes anywhere in the world, and it combines a nutritional philosophy, save time and money through meal prep, uh, so that you can save about five to 10 hours throughout your busy work week. That's flexible with vegan, vegetarian, paleo, keto, and any nutritional philosophy that you adhere to. I just teach you how to meal prep. It's a system that's about four years old. I've upgraded it four times now, and it's completely automated, and it's free when you download our app. It's a month-long program. So for people who are unaware, you know, we've got to concern ourselves with scope of practice, uh, boundaries. We're not registered dietitians. So we don't want to overstep those boundaries. And the, the thing that I liked about what you described, because I'm not, uh, I'm not intimately familiar with that, is it's basically helping to do what you just said about meal prep, which is so, so integral in, in maintaining our weight or, or trying to lose weight. So it's, it's something that I, I think I would have been remiss if I didn't point it out, because maybe someone will have an interest that wouldn't have otherwise if we didn't bring it up. All right. We're simply just changing a lifestyle. The more often you exercise, the better you eat, the better you feel, the better you look. It's pretty simple, right? We're not trying to do anything else. So besides Dr. Quattrochi, does anybody have any questions? Because <laughs> I would like to demonstrate just a little bit more about what it is that I can bring value to your lives. Um, what requirements do you have for uh, Positive attitude, be coachable. Um, be willing to get outside of your comfort zone and should be punctual. <laughs> um, so the coaching is 100% online? Our coaching of clients? Yeah. We, we do have some in-person clients okay. uh, still. 
um, after June, we'll be shutting down our studio and we'll be 100% online after that. Okay. I did skip over one of Dr. Khosrowshi's questions. When I was at that first studio location, the big one, uh, one of their members came to me and she said, Dave, I'm a volleyball coach at School of Mines and I'm running the strength and conditioning program right now. And I'm going on maternity leave the 12 weeks after the head, head volleyball coach is going on her maternity leave. So they had 24 weeks of gap between full-time coaches. And she said, will you come be our strength coach on a contract basis? Um, they paid me for four days worth of work each week and I was able to fulfill my purpose of starting at Metro of being a collegiate strength and conditioning coach with volleyball and then football. So I did that for about seven months. It was incredibly rewarding and then I opened my studio. You know, in my experience, um, Dave isn't unique in our program in wanting to open a business. We've had a lot of students who have that sort of interest. Matter of fact, I hear it quite often from students that that's, at some time, at some point, they want to open a, some, a gym, a box, or whatever. And I can just tell you from, from experience in, in being the university supervisor, um, students get incredible experience working under someone who has, has started things from the ground ground up. So if that's something that is of interest to you, I would really encourage you. Again, he's a, he's a member of our family, right? He, he was sitting on your side of the desk. He took this class. Um, so he knows where you're coming from and, and he just wants to help. Um, one, one quick thing, Dave, we've got, I haven't changed anything in this class about, uh, you know, I always leave one week open so students can do outside visitations. If we have students who might be interested in, in coming to chat with you and see your, your space and maybe have you show them a little bit about what you have going on the computer, would you be amenable to that uh, Absolutely. Next, next one? Absolutely. Uh, Afterlifechampions.com, you can see my online schedule. Um, it, it says book a consultation in the menu bar. If you want to come meet with me in person, I'll give you a tour of the studio. Um, take about an hour of your time and I will explain a little bit more in depth about how we do what we do and see if it's the right fit for you guys. And then share a little bit more about my vision of what will happen in the future. Yeah, and Dave's info is on our database, of course. Yeah. Anybody else have a question for him? He was really generous with his time. He's got a lot of stuff going. He came back just to do this for us. Anybody else? Let's give him a hand. Thanks for that. I do have just a little bit more time if that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Go. There's one very important thing that I want to teach you guys today, and that's <clears throat> building a business is not exactly the right the right fit for everybody. However, each and every day that you go out into the world and choose what are some niches in the industry that you're interested in, first of all? Tactical strength and conditioner. Sure. Just shout them out, that's fine. I know we got a bunch of PT, come on. <laughs> yeah, PT, OT. Okay. Keep going. Crickets. We just strength and conditioning. So you're researching through this class comparative fitness niches in the industry. I've narrowed my niche down so far, you may be able to identify it. I've said it a couple times. 25 to 40 year old busy adults that want to become stronger physically, mentally, and emotionally. That's our niche. And when you go out into the world of tactical strength and conditioning or um, occupational therapy or physical therapy or collegiate strength and conditioning, you're going to be working with a select niche in the market. If you're working at cardio imaging, uh, where they do DEXA scans, is that what it's called? Cardio imaging? Uh, image, yeah. image group, yeah. excuse me. I just went there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, if you go to image group, you're not gonna work with jujitsu athletes, right? So you have to figure out um, who it is that you want to work with. Now, if you take notes one time today, write down the system. So identify your niche, step number one. Step number two, is figure out how to get them to you. We start with assessments, which has to take place during the consultation process. So if you're self-employed, or if you're working at Lifetime Fitness, or if you're at Image Group, you have to figure out what it is that's gonna draw your ideal client or your niche 
into where you work. It wasn't too hard for Nick, who's an intern in this, this semester at Image Group, to get me down for a DEXA scan. It was glaringly, shockingly bad results mm -hmm. because uh, I'm focused elsewhere right now. But but it was pretty easy for him to get me into that consultation. And then he performed his assessments on me. It's super simple. It's six minutes long. Zoop, zoop, you know, back and forth. And I discovered bone density and then discovered body composition. But in our world, we pick who we want to work with, we get them in for a consultation, and during that consultation, we must give them assessments. In our, in our business, we choose deadlift, pull up, push up, and sit up. Familiar with all those? Very, very simple process. In order to establish baseline ass assessments, which we add in body composition, body weight, and circumference too. So we have seven assessments that are performed in an hour or less. Could you imagine yourself doing seven assessments and a sales process during an hour long session? Yeah, me neither. So I had to get better at that. Because no matter what you do, no matter where you work, your consultation is a sales process. You're trying to get your client or your image group patient or your physical therapy patient out of their own way so that you can coach them to their ideal results. Does that make sense? So then what happens? What's the next step in the process? Can I get them to come back? <laughs> sure, that's during the sales process, so we're gonna ask all these questions of like, does that feel like something you can do two to three times a week? And the answer is always yes, <laughs> but. Yes, develop a program. That's the, that's the next obvious step. So what is your program design based on? The person that you want to work with. My strength and conditioning program for 25 and 40 year old busy adults is going to be different from your tactical strength and conditioning program. However, we're going to see a 25 to 40 year old in that time frame the six years that I've been working, that's interested, or as a cop, or as a jiu-jitsu athlete, or as a fireman, or as a, a former Navy SEAL. And you can work with anybody and everybody in that 25. Then you can apply your passion of tactical strength and conditioning to your ideal client, right? Just because you came out of your niche. Does that make sense? So we have to design a, a program of any length. Pick it, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 12 months. That's your idea, yeah, that's, yeah, you want your client to stick around for 12 months because then you get paid for 12 months. But you got to bite the elephant or eat the elephant one bite at a time. Okay, what's the next step? It's all well and good to write a 12-week program and give it to your client. Say thanks for the check let them walk out the door. But even if they come to see you in person or online or through their doctor's recommendation, your number one job as a strength and conditioning or a personal trainer or physical therapist or occupational therapist is accountability. If you do not learn how to hold your clients accountable to consistently adhere to their program design, you, you won't last long in any position and you, you won't get referrals, and you'll be just kind of bashing your head against the wall. So the key component to everything that we do on a daily basis is accountability. How do we get our clients to adhere to our program consistently, frequently, on a timely basis? The FIT principle is coming into play here. Well, the number one, accountability system that we have developed into our business is price. Do we want a low price or a high price in order to boost accountability? Why the high price? Because if they're invested in it, they're more likely to continue it. That's absolutely correct. The principle of investment comes into play here. If you rent, a home, uh, rent somebody else's home or purchase your own home, which one are you gonna carry on for? And we, yeah, right? Now it's coming clear. If we purchase our own home, that's our analogy, purchase our own home, then we're gonna be more accountable 
to upholding the standards at which it's going to take to maintain it and actually get the investment back out when we go to uh, cash in at 600000 when I bought it for 200000 That's kind of this idea that we want to plan, paint the picture in our client or our patient or our um, jujitsu athlete's mind with the end goal in mind. Pick up Stephen Covey's book, Worth 10 of them. Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. What's our end goal? Where do we want to be in 90 days? And we've broken down our accountability system into 90 day increments. 90 days is a very reasonable, timely expectation to actually see some results. And we do that through nutrition. You will never, ever, ever see the best results for your clients by just focusing on step number four. I've tried, it didn't work. Yeah, we saw some clients, maybe one out of 10 got really great results because it was so simple, the nutrition advice that I was giving in the beginning. Eat more veggies, drink more water, get rest, make time for yourself, make time for exercise, make time for meal prep. I knew all the ideas and I was giving it to them so simply that only about two out of 10 got great results. When I showed you Diane and Boyce, it's because they came to me for this factor right here. And we gave them better advice after becoming more educated. We're still not writing a daily meal plan, but we're giving um, an improved nutritional uh, meal to choose from, from whole unprocessed foods. And then what's the last piece? Actually, it's right here. It's the last key piece of the puzzle in accountability. We've got a high price point. My hourly rate is $125. But the more you buy, the more you save. That's part of the sales process. When they buy a lot, like I just sold a three month package for just shy of two grand. So it was a nice way to have my client buy in to his principle of investment because I painted the picture during the assessment and consultation process, which is a sales process. But this last key piece of accountability is the second most important piece of the puzzle, and that's community. The community of Metro State will always be there for you. Dr. Quattrochi has been there for me. He helped me graduate by going under the radar and saying, hey, Dave needs to switch this categorized class, da 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 da. He went to bat for me, and he went to bat for me during my internship when I wasn't getting along with my internship supervisor. He went to bat for me when he re recommended these two interns for me. He's come to the gym like three or four times. He then offered me the opportunity to come back and teach at Metro State. So the Metro State community taught me what it's like to build my own community, to get more buy-in, to get more clients, to get more results in order for me to live out my lifelong purpose which is to share the benefits of fitness and nutrition for mental health. Thank you. Um, this is a good time to take a break. Uh, how about if you come back in about